Hey everyone, uh, this is another video on um, you know, a periodic continued fraction. So, um, in the last video we saw this lemma, which says if we write our, our nearly simple continued fraction out as a plus bz over c plus dz, then we do 1 over that and replace z with 1 over z and reverse reverse all the terms in our continued fraction and it's almost the same thing it's just like the C and B have switched or if you want to think of it as like a matrix we've taken the transpose okay and um, we proved that um, using induction okay now we're gonna apply that uh, this formula to prove the relationship between if we have a continued fraction that's periodic like a0 up to an repeating then we want to relate that to the continued fraction of another purely periodic continued fraction just the reverse kind of the reverse of alpha okay so let's write out so um first of all because alpha is repeating we know that we can express alpha as a nearly simple continued fraction a0 up to an followed by alpha. Okay. Alpha is just a0 up to an repeating so this is um, this works out and then we know our formula for the um, for a nearly con simple continued fraction is, is this formula and then pn, pn minus 1, qn minus 1, qn those are the convergence of, of alpha right. Okay so we have this formula um, and now let's write out beta. Beta is the reverse of alpha. And um, using some like little tricks, well, we can write beta as an up to a zero beta, and then replace. We know that beta is just one over beta inverse. Okay. And this is also that we can um, write out beta in terms of the continued for like the convergence for alpha. Okay, so we write beta is a n up to a zero followed by one over beta inverse, and we know that one over this expression is going to be um, p n minus one plus q n. Like we're going to use this lemma. <coughs> okay, we're going to use this lemma where um, z is going to be beta inverse. Okay, so we know that one one over this is going to be um, pn minus 1 plus qn minus 1 beta inverse divided by pn plus qn beta inverse. Just this expression with the pn and qn minus 1 switched and we're applying it for one over, like with, with z equals beta inverse. Okay and 1 over this is equal to this so and that's a 1 over beta. Okay so we get this equation for beta Okay, we get um, 1 over beta is this, multiply top and bottom by beta, we get pn minus 1 beta plus qn minus 1 divided by pn beta plus qn, and then we, um, we like cross multiply and simplify, we get the following equation for beta, this equation. If you do the same thing for alpha, you get this equation. Okay. And now what we want is that to let alpha prime be minus 1 over beta and show that alpha prime is also a root of this. Okay. Also we want this, um, we want alpha prime to lie in this range. That's not too hard. Well, uh, beta is a, a continued fraction, so it's like um, and, and here a n is like the nth term in alpha so it's like positive so we know beta is also positive right so um, in fact it's bigger than a n so beta is greater than 1 so um, 1 over beta is between 1 and 0 and therefore negative 1 over beta is between 0 and negative 1. 
Okay, so that's not it's not too hard to see. And, and we want to see why is um, negative one over beta a root of this equation? Well, um, divide divide this equation through by beta squared. Okay, maybe I need some more room. Okay. And, and so when you divide by beta squared, you get the equation p n minus one. So you divide it by beta squared plus q n minus one minus p n. Um, when you divide beta by beta squared, you get a uh, one over beta. Or in other words negative alpha dash and then when you divide minus and then you have minus qn over um over beta squared one over beta squared and that's um one over beta squared is the same as alpha dash squared now multiply multiply through by negative one you get this equation all right so alpha and alpha dash are roots of this equation, the second one. And we know that alpha dash is between negative one and zero. So it can't be the same as alpha. So alpha, this alpha dash, which is negative one over beta is the other root of this equation. Okay, so let's see now what we've proved. We've proved the following. If alpha is purely periodic, then um, it satisfies this quadratic equation and the other root of the quadratic equation is negative one over beta, where beta is like the reverse continued fraction of alpha. Okay. So that's what we've proved. Okay, and I'll record one more video um, to try and wrap things up.